Hello everyone, and welcome to Dyson Sphere Program, the game where you capture the power of a sun. Not just one sun, but a thousand suns. This game is a factory builder on the scale like nothing you've ever seen before. It, it works in star systems, not planets. It is an absolutely incredible experience, and I can't wait to share it with you today. If you'd like to play along, the seed for this planet system will be in the comment section, uh, oh, sorry, or rather in the description. It is, uh, we have two starting worlds around a gas giant. We're going to be landing on this Mediterranean planet over here. God, that is stunning, isn't it? And, oh, we, uh, we're going to be taking it all the way to the end in this one. That's the plan for this series anyway. Uh, I'm going to be recording these in groups and then reacting to your feedback sort of in, in stages. So please do leave any comments and suggestions you might have for builds and ideas. Um, I can't promise I'll be able to react to everything, you know, everyone's opinions are valid. And it can get a little overwhelming for the creator pretty quickly to try and incorporate everyone's ideas at all times, but I will do my best to do just that. Let's turn ourselves into the planet and land. Now, Dyson Sphere Program is a game about taking a pristine, natural environment, like this one over here, and wrecking it. Just basically turning it into an industrialized hellscape, much like uh, 18th century London. That's sort of... <laughs> just a, <laughs> I have a bit of a tone shift there, I realize, but it is definitely uh, something to be aware of. So, if we land... Nice, and uh, speaking of we, this is we. We are a mech. Woohoo! Look at that. There's actually a really in-depth mech customization system, so if you'd like to design and share one for me, I'd be happy to use it. I like these colors. Turns out this is already the largely unemployed aesthetic. We've got the gold and the black. That's, uh, well, you can't say no, can I? This is our starting world. We, uh, we have a landing pad we can pick up for some fuel. I'm gonna leave it there because there is actually an achievement I haven't gotten, which is to finish the game without picking that thing up. I think it's called, like, Memento or something. I... I'll be honest with you, I can't find it. I've done a few achievements, I've never really gone for them. This isn't going to be an achievement run, it's just kind of something I'm going for. I have played this game before, but years ago. There's a lot of new features, a lot of new recipes and things I haven't played, which I thought might make a cool start for us to check out. Anyway, we should uh, pick up some resources, start with some rocks. What I'm really going to want, actually, is these trees and plants. And the reason for that, if you look at the bottom of the bar, is that we have a battery. Right? This is kind of our ability to do work. If we click on the C panel, the mecha panel, we can A, customize our armor, like I said, or we can put some fuel in the damn fuel generator. This basically burns it up and recharges the battery. Uh, fuel has a specific amount of energy in it. This is 1.5 megajoules, that's 500 kilojoules, or 0.5 megajoules. You can see it's got a 30% debuff. That's just the... That means it, it, uh, it produces that amount of energy 30% slower than the baseline. It doesn't mean you get 30% less energy, it's just your, your your sort of speed boost. In this case, a speed debuff. Alright, but we need to go ahead and start taking our way up. We can't build anything at present, we know nothing. We are Jonathan of the Snow. So let's go ahead and right-click on some iron, dig it up real quick. And we're going to try our best uh, and see if we can succeed. The first research here, electromagnetism, requires us to produce and consume 10 magnetic coils. It'll give us a wind turbine, a power pole, and a mining unit. In order to make magnetic coils, what do we need to do? We can mouse over them. There's a tooltip for everything. It's wonderful. We need uh, 20. If we have to make 10 of these, we're going to need 20 magnetic rings by the look of it, which are these guys, which are made from iron ore. Turns out I've got some iron ore. Let me cook up this. Oh, and we can make 19. We need one more. And uh, I'm going to want to make 10 of these at a time. I just like making things in round numbers. We're also going to need 10 copper ingots. I guess that makes up the wire. There's no, like, copper wire, like in Factorio. I will be making a lot of Factorio references. The game is, you know, when this game came out, Factorio was kind of the only other really competition. I guess Satisfactory had also just started, but uh, they could have came out around similar times, maybe a couple years apart. Uh, and Factorio remained the golden standard for quite some time for factory games. All right, but there we go. We are cooking it all up. We can now make ourselves 20 magnetic coils. You'll see that by queuing up the coils, it also queued up the ingots. Uh, if you queue up a, uh, a sort of a final product, if you have the resources to make all the intermediary products, it'll queue them up as well. It's a really nice quality of life feature that I love. Now, since we've got manual research enabled, we can deselect this to turn it off. It will use up items in our inventory to produce uh, the stuff we want. Oh, I should show you the UI a bit, I guess. There we go, we got electromagnetism unlocked though. Let's, uh, let's, before I show you the UI, let me slap down my miner. You'll see it's got like a radius in front of it. Uh, every node it hits has its own sort of 
quantity of resources attached to it, so, the, you know, the, the, the smaller crystals are almost depleted, the bigger ones are pretty full. Every node you hit generates 0.5 resources per second, so six nodes, that's three resources per second. Uh, the, the magic number is 12, so two nodes, two machines hitting six, and I'll explain why in a second. So this thing consumes 420 kilowatts of power, nice. We're gonna slap down a wind turbine, however, you'll notice, wind turbine only generates 300 kilowatts of power. That is not enough to keep the lights on, which means that this thing is gonna be running at reduced efficiency, 71% of its potential mining speed. But that's actually, for now, that's completely fine for us. We also have a power tower, which we don't really need, this thing has its own radius, but you can slap this down to broadcast power around more efficiently. All right, we're gonna grab that, and while we are waiting, we're gonna cook up some iron plates. Always be crafting, I always say. Very nice. And let me show you the UI. So, bottom left, that's your in so stuff coming into your inventory. Pressing E will show your inventory. Pressing, uh, is it R? T? T is your technology tree. It's a big boy, very big boy. If you follow the central path all the way down, you finish the game. That's how you win, by researching this. Your, uh... Your bottom right here is your tabs, you've got tech tree, you've got your production statistics, this can be quite helpful. We're producing 8.9 ore per second, we're not consuming any, we have no other production. Power is in a deficit, as we know. Research is non-existent. Our, uh, this is actually your, <laughs> I really like this, this is your real-time review of your performance data. And metadata, this is a, quite literally, a, a meta-game statistic, right? Which kind of turns, as you consume, I think it's a... It might be a hundred units of in-game science, you get one unit of out-of-game science, and that lets you just speed up the early game by like buying your way through early researches. We're not gonna be doing that. All right, you can shift click on items to grab them. Your build bar is at the bottom here, power, mining, yada, yada, yada. In order to unlock more of it, we've got to do more tech. Uh, let's start over here. I want to increase my battery size. That's 20 iron plates and 20 copper ingots. That's my maximum core energy here. We just need some more copper. So let's actually, I'm gonna grab my setup over here. We're gonna dump it on this side. Bang. And bang. Okay, cool. That's gonna make up, and as we produce it, it will consume it. Alright, let's dig up some coal. This is a much better fuel than uh, wood, which is about to run out. Uh, as I said, wood has a 10% debuff. Coal has a 0% buff or debuff, meaning this is kind of the baseline fuel for your mech. Coal powered industrialism. You gotta love it. What does that remind you of? Oh, that's never gone wrong for anybody before. All right, let's cook up a few more of these plates. We're going to need a lot of them because we need a lot of circuits as well. Circuits are made with plates and iron, or copper plates and iron plates, rather. All right, so once that's done, we're going to want to research the next piece of the puzzle, which is going to be smelting. So we don't have to do all this, this, this click in ourselves. We're going to NQ that research. You'll see we still have 10 magnetic coils left over, so we're going to make another 10 circuits. This will actually produce 20 because it uh, does two at a time, but that's that's still good. All right, let's actually, let's get the circuits going right away so the research begins, and then we'll, we'll queue up some more of this. Copper ore has no other use except making copper ingots. Iron ore is used to make both iron ingots and magnetic coils. So uh, with copper, you can always safely turn it into ingots in your inventory. With iron, it's sometimes worth having a little bit lying around if you don't have these in your inventory as well. Just so you can keep a bit of diversity going, you know? In fact, let's, uh, let's make up some more copper magnetic coils, rather. All right, cool. And we have research smelting. I'm actually going to move this back over here because we don't need that much copper early on. Well, I think we actually we need an almost equivalent amount of both, but it's, you definitely need more iron to start with. Yeah, let's put down this. We're going to grab the ore. We're going to... Ah, there we go. Put down our production machine. So I want one of these to make iron plates and one of these to make magnetic coils and like I said since since different ores have multiple recipes you have to actually select one unlike games like Factorio which automatically select it you do just you get you get into the habit of just you know picking these quickly all right but now as you can see this thing haven't got power connection it's outside the radius of that so we're going to slap down our power pole suddenly everybody's linked up but we are running at like 57 percent capacity because uh, we've got no, we haven't got enough production, so I think the next order of business is to handcraft a few more of these. Now, before we do that, I would like to get basic logistics and basic assembly processes researched, though. Uh, for that, we're going to need another 10 of these bad boys, so why don't you give me this? Oh, look, at it's all speeding together now. There we go, make me another 10 of those, and we're going to need 20 gears, which is going to require 20 iron plates. It's one-to-one. -one. Okay, there we go. We got all the gears made that we needed. 
plus a few extra, and we now have basic logistics. This gives us access to belts. These move items at six items per second. It also gives us access to sorters. Very nice, automation. So belts can either be pulled directly out of a machine, like mining machines. Not all machines can do this, or it can be interacted with by a sorter. Uh, all production machines have this sort of radius of white squares around them. These are interaction points. They are both inputs and outputs, depending on the order, so orientation of the thing you stick into them. Clicking on an item and then dragging it to the second location will determine the orientation. So we want to drag from the belt into the machine. And now we're going to be putting iron ore from here into here. From the belt into the machine, iron ore from here into here. The belt's a bit wavy because this thing isn't perfectly lined up with the grid, but that's okay, that happens. So we're going to grab this. You'll see right now it's not inserting because this is actually over its, uh, I think it's, the stacks are like five normally and it's over that. So it's just going to, it's going to wait until it empties that out before it starts dropping stuff in. All right, make me some more gears and then you know what? Make me some dang wind turbines. I think it's time. Okay, I've got seven more wind turbines queued up. Let's jump over these and plop these bad boys down. Uh, I kind of want to put them somewhere where I'm probably not going to expand. So I think down this way is just fine. Click and drag to spread them out. Nice. They just have to be with... The, it doesn't matter if they overlap. They produce the same amount. It's more about just... They, they're not allowed to be built too close together. They're not allowed, you see. Okay. Nice. Don't worry about all the warnings of mecha core energy being insufficient. That's nerd shit. We don't worry about that. We're going to grab ourselves more of this. I want to make a couple more mining machines. One to produce uh, coal for me, the other one to produce copper. All right, next up on the chopping block for research is going to be the electromagnetic matrix, I think. This requires us to do 10 magnetic coils and 10 circuit boards. It gives us access to blue science. Uh, we do want to do a little bit of automation before we get there, though. So just give me a second to grab some more resources, and I'm going to put that right down. I think starting with this, we're going to pop down... Just a, this is like a coal storage. This is... I'm, honestly, I'm just going to let that fill up as much as it wants. And this is just... Uh, well, we already need like four units at a time. So let's just save some power and not overproduce. That will be good. Okay, I want this thing to make me some gears. We have this machine just kind of waiting for us. And we have a storage unit. And we have labs. Cool. Let's get. To, we'll get to that in a second. I, I need to do a bit of automation before that becomes important. So we're going to bring iron plates into here, and whatever we output from there is going to go into this box. Let's stack up like five stacks of whatever it is. That's the limiter. And I think we're going to make gears. Gears are good. Forty-five per minute at this current rate. We're working at 100% efficiency because our power grid has not yet collapsed in on itself like a dying star. You'll love to see it. Gears are super simple, one iron plate, one gear. I'm actually also going to want to start stacking iron plates just for my own usage. So why don't we use that machine for just that? We'll just put iron plates in here. And yeah, I think five stacks, it'll be like 500 at a time. That's probably, uh, maybe we could go a bit more ambitious with it. Let's do like 600 stacks. Okay, or 600 items, six stacks. All right, I want you to come over here now. Oh, we don't have any more ox melters. Oh, I built assembling machines first, like a doofus. Because I want... How are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? I want to make, let's make copper coil, we'll make copper, mm, we'll make electronic circuits there, and we'll make copper magnetic coils over here. I'm going to say copper coils a lot, I don't know why, I, I keep getting it mixed up in my head. Okay, let's make up uh, five more smelters, that should do the trick here. Alright, so these things can have variable inputs, which I really like, so we're going to have, uh, we'll put magnetic coils on... Nah, we'll do circuits on this side, coils on this side. It really doesn't matter. I don't know why I'm fussing over this so much. Uh, we're going to have to bring the coils from here over there, though, which is going to be a little spaghetti. So why don't we instead switch you over to iron? We'll move this whole thing up. Yeah, let's let's move this up. So I'm going to delete that, and then uh, we're going to put it back down over here. Just rebuild the whole thing. This can do iron plates. Then that will do iron plates, and we'll have one more smelter over here. And there you go. Copy-paste everything which can do that. All right, easy to get it over that way. Then you're gonna make me gears, as we spoke about. We're gonna put you in like this. I'm gonna grab a copy of that. We'll grab a copy of that for each of these as well. Oh, I need more storage. Oh, we went through that quickly, didn't we? Make me 10 more storages, thank you. Why are you, why are you so far away? A little, yeah, go, go closer. That was very far away. Uh, so your inserters do actually have to travel, like, physical distance. So I think I explained this already, but one transfer is uh, one second. So, like, it transfer one item per second at one square. 
if you go two squares, it's half that speed. Three squares is a third of that speed. It can't go four squares. That's the maximum range is three. Uh-huh. All right, we can now build Matrix Lab. I know, don't tell me how to live my life, okay? Cool, so we got those all queued up. Now we want to bring our iron plates over there. Let's do that right away. Iron plates can come like... Let's go up a bit so we don't interfere with the other one. Iron plates there. We're going to want our copper plates shared between these two. And we're going to want the magnetic coils coming over here. Let's make a few more smelters. Obviously, we need to change the recipe on this. I'm going to shift click and just paste it on there. Very cool. And then our resources we produce from this will go into this machine. It's all starting to come together and I am out of fuel. Shit. Uh, yeah, give me everything in there. That's what we did this for. And stack it into me. Uh, by the way, control clicking in the empty space will dump whatever it can into that inventory. So whatever is compatible. Be careful with like storage boxes because you'll just put everything you own into them. You want to do it in like inventories that have a set filter like this. So I just control click there, puts all the copper ore. Control click here, puts all the iron ore. Uh, let's also get a storage box going just for stuff we can't use right now. Like uh, this. We will want it later. But for, uh, I'm going to swap these around just because it's easier to see. That looks good. Alright, let's get all of this plumbed up. Uh, we're going to need a few more of these bad boys. And then we won't have to make circuits again. It's going to be great. Uh, for some reason, inserters don't like being placed on corners. You'll see they sort of stretch over to the next straight bit. So you always got to make sure you have a little, just a little flat bit for it to place things on. All right, and that's all stacking up. So let's make use of it. Uh, we don't actually have to run all the way down. It occurs to me. A bit of a waste of belts, and those are a precious resource at this point. We want to bring in magnetic coils over here and copper plates over here. And this one actually does need to run more because we also need to put copper plates into this machine. And this machine requires steel plates. We got, uh, sorry, iron. Iron and copper in. And we've got magnetic coils and copper in here. And then, oh, sorry, uh, magnetic coil, magnetic ring. Sorry, magnet, just magnet. Okay, we've got magnet in, uh, magnetic coil out. Yeah, I, 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 will, I will continuously, consistently, perpetually get these names wrong. So brace yourself. All right, we are now making uh, coils and circuits. And it just so happens that that's what this research thing over here, this research lab thingamadoodad, needs in order to do its work. So research in this game is produced and consumed in the same structures. This is not made clear to uh, new players. I think is a bit of an oversight, so I'm going to do my best to explain it. Uh, well, first things first, we're going to need to run resources into it. We can just direct insert from these machines, but I like to put stuff on a belt because it gives you a visual indicator of when you run out. Do it just like that. I need to make more of these, speaking of running out. One of my shy on? Just iron plates? Well, we got a box. Always have a box. All right, we're going to put in this and output, oh, sorry, output those and input that, output that and input this. Now, if you're worried about belts getting clogged up with stuff you don't want them to have, for example, maybe you're storing three things in this box. When you drag this out, you can hit tab and it will change the filter. So we can filter this to be only magnetic coils. Not that I'm worried about it, but it is something if you want to share boxes, you can do. And now we need to decide what we're going to do with this lab. So labs can either produce science or consume it. We're going to produce science, of course, and we're going to need to build a second lab. This is what I made that glass for in order to consume it. Hey, we produced our first electromagnetic matrix. That's very cool. I'm going to cancel that build so that this happens faster. Very nice. All right, our lab is built. We can slap that down now, and we can just directly insert from here to there. Uh, this will need a power pole, of course. And voila, our labs are functioning. Now, I can actually make a couple more of these, and I'm tempted to, and I'll tell you why. Uh, hold on, we actually want to just, let's just grab these resources so we don't have to craft. One, two. Oh, we do need to make the glass, but that's fine. Because you can stack things in this game. So now these labs will now share inventories and produce at twice the rate. So instead, oh, we can actually do three of them. But no, I think I'll just do two and two. And I want this thing set to research. It is set to research. We need to choose a research. I think what I first want is universe exploration. This allows me to see the vein distribution across this planet. See what we've got to work with anyway. All right, but we have finished research results. We can now view the vein distribution on the planet. So we click on this little button over here or press H and we click on vein distribution. And now we have an overlay. Oh, 
So we know we've got about 3 million iron on this planet and about 1 million copper. Floating around, there's about 10 million coal, a bunch of water. We got some stone, it's all looking great. And this will allow us to plan our starter base. Uh, this is not the starter base, this is like the, like, oh my god, I can't believe we just landed on a new planet panic base. We're going to need a starter base, a true beginner base. Now, in order to do that, and that's what we're gonna, how we're going to finish this episode, is by putting that together, we're actually going to want to have iron, copper, and stone all in one place. And that's why this seed is such a good one, because it is all right here. We're going to mine these up, smelt them down, send them this way, and then we'll build like a bus, like a, like a thoroughfare of resources that will uh, turn it into all the machines we want to use. So we don't have to worry about, oh, I need to build some inserters. Now we just go to a box and it'll be in a box, you know? Everything that you could ever want. Next up, we're going to queue some upgrades to ourself, I think. Uh, first one for me that seems important is this, an extra construction drone. We literally will build everything 25% faster. Uh, I think we are out of power. Yeah, we are. Do I have, did I get thermal power research? I did not. Um, okay, pause that. That is secondary to concern right now. We want thermal power. Let's turn that on. We'll go through the researches as we need them. I'm not going to do like, I'm not going to research ahead of time because the research is so quick in this game. We'll just research when we need things. That way we can stay on top of what we're actually doing. And speaking of which, we now need to put together our power plant. So this uh, research is about to complete. We'll be able to have thermal power, which is amazing. I am actually going to make five more of these here towers, the wind farms, just to tide us over. Thermal power is great because it produces a lot of energy and it consumes a resource you don't use much of early on, which is coal. The real danger with it is that if you become too reliant on it, it's very easy to have your grid fail on you. Uh, you uh, because what will happen, right, is if you start dipping below your power, sort of ideal power, like 100% power, your mines will produce slower, which means that less coal makes it to your power plants, which means that they produce less power, which means that your mines mine even slower than that, and the death spiral begins, as you can, as I'm sure you can deduce. So we're gonna slap down power plant right there. I'm gonna build a few more of these right now. Let's queue that to five at a time. Very nice. We are producing thermal power, and you'll see immediately our power grid will jump to 100%. Yeah. Each one of these produces 0.3 megawatts of power. This produces 2.16. It is like eight wind turbines in one spot. They are very, very powerful. All right, give me another thermal power plant over there. I think we're gonna stack it to three, and then the six of these will run our base. And as you can see, you can pull from one into the other by putting them behind each other like this. So it will pull from this inventory and put it in this one. Voila. Okay, I added another machine over here just to sort of help this iron line out. This is way overkill. We're now producing six per second and only consuming four. So this will always be at surplus, but it, it was kind of starving for power back there. Or starving for resources. In fact, let me just dump some of these coils I'm carrying around into that. I also like to would like to make some belts automatically. Uh, and I think this is a perfect spot for it. We have the two ingredients. Uh, that's probably too close. We have the two ingredients we need which is gears and plates right next to each other. So let's put in gears, let's put in plates, and let's output a, uh, here, here. Let's output to the storage. I want you making me belts, baby. Belts, belts, baby. All right, and how many belts do I want? I want this thing to make like, I think they stack to 300? So it's gonna make 1,500 belts. That's gonna be the number of belts we want. Also, I think that this probably won't be able to keep up with the production. Yeah, we need two of them. Let's grab this and let's go ahead and start planning our little starter base. Okay, I've gotten four machines, each touching six nodes on each of these uh, sets of resources. That's looking good. We'll, we'll be sending the iron and copper that way to be smelted. We're going to do the stone down here and this is actually going to be a good opportunity to kind of set up our blueprint for how we want to do that. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and unlock blueprints. We're gonna want that as soon as this is done. So we're gonna grab, uh, so let's just, let's just do some maths, right? These belts output six stone or six items per second. That's what they can carry. So our recipes need to work around that number. That's the limiting factor we've got here. We can put as many machines as we need down. We can put as few machines as we need down, but we can only uh, transport six items per second right now. We can, we can make that number a lot higher, but that's the number for now. Okay, so we're gonna put down an arc smelter, let's do it like, we need six of these. So let's go like here, there we go. So by the way, you can drag something. Uh, let me just uh, start it again. 
So if you drag something, it'll put them in a straight line. If you hit tab, it will change the spacing between things, which is super useful. But I want to do three by threes because that way we can put power poles between them. It's just like a nice ratio. Uh, same thing on this side. I think we're going to do six per side. Very cool. Then our, of course, our resources are going to come in from here and in from here. And then we're going to need to take resources out. Uh, so I think we'll go out like this and we'll go out like this. We'll then, of course, also need inserters. So we're going to bring in from either side and put out on either side. And finally, power poles. We'll put six per set and this will be a nice clean blueprint to work off of. Nice, we have blueprints. Okay, give me a second, I just need to prep something. In order to open our blueprints, we're going to hit O. Oh, actually, I've unbound that, my bad. <laughs> we're going to hit the this button, here we go. And that brings up the YouTube tab. Well, actually, it's gonna bring up this tab, which for you might be empty if you're starting the game. You can create blueprint books and, uh, oh, sorry. And you can rename them and give them icons and all sorts of stuff. I've already gone ahead and uh, taken the liberty of uh, putting together a book for us on here. This, by the way, represents a real folder in your computer. You can't see it if I open File Explorer, but this actually opens up Windows File Explorer. And uh, there's like a folder system there with a bunch of text files. That's all the blueprints are, is text files. Which means, by the way, that you can actually do your blueprint management in the Documents tab on your computer. You don't have to do it in-game, which is really, really cool. So if you want to get blueprints, you just paste them in here. Uh, this book will be made available at the end of this playthrough. But for right now, it's going to be kept uh, a close guarded secret. Unless people are really keen for it, then I'll pick it up. Anyway, this is going to be our setup. Uh, let's do it from here. Hit tab to space it. Do it from here. Hit tab to space it. Uh, excuse me. Bam. Back of item. Oh, I don't have any uh, inserters left. Take another 10 of those. As I was saying, let's hit tab. Space it uh, from this guy. Space it out. Okay, cool. And this is going to be our blueprint. We take in six items on each side. We output six items on each side. Simple six by six smelting array. We hit Control C to go into copy mode. We're going to select everything we want to be part of it, which is going to be all of this stuff. In fact, I'm actually going to make this tileable. And the way we do that is to push this back a bit. Give myself a couple of extra stuts here. Because then that way, if we paste another one of these in front of this, it will link up from here to there. At least that's the idea. We'll see if that's actually tileable. Let me uh, click U now, and let's see if those line up. They do, but the side ones don't. So this needs one more forward. And this just means when we get better belts, we can just slap down two of these in front of each other, upgrade them, and save a new blueprint without having to redesign anything. Okay, cool. So that's tileable. We're going to grab that. We're going to call this uh, six per second smelter. There we go. Smelter. Nice. And we're going to grab that. We're going to paste it there. Six per second smelter. Very cool. And we're going to save the blueprints. It's going to put it over there. But now what I'm going to want to do is put it into this YouTube folder. Now there's two ways we can do this. Either we can copy the item then go into here, make a new one, click there and paste it, right? Hit save. Now the item's in there, but now you've got duplicates. The other way to do it, let's just delete this, is to go into your file explorer. Literally just drag the thing in there, right? We can even make a new folder. I'm going to do this off camera, of course. Make a new folder that's like basic melting. Because maybe we'll want to put steel in there at some point as well. Drag that into there. And check this out now. If I close this and open this up, YouTube, basic smelting, six-piece smelter. You do have to set the icon in here. Uh, so this will be basic smelting, so let's put like a yellow belt and uh, and a smelter. Save. There we go. And there's our whole thing. Okay, cool. Now, I suppose I could just do like a Google Drive folder uh, that you guys can just download with all the stuff in it. Yeah, that, that could work. Let me know if that's something you want. Alright, but now we need to pick our recipes. So we're going to say, you're going to be stone, you're going to be glass, and we're just going to copy and paste this over. Remember not to get the sides mixed up because the orientation of the inserters is different. And voila, just like that, we're done. Okay, I'm now going to just stamp down that blueprint over here. Now that we've got it, we have just sped things up dramatically. Having one good blueprint really just makes your life so much easier as you go along. So we'll do one over here for the... What do we want to make? We want to make 
two sets of iron plates plus uh, magnetic rings. We want to make two sets of copper. I can go over there. They're not perfectly lined up, but that's okay. And then what I'm going to do is control C. We're going to copy one side of this. I'm going to use that now, and that's going to go over here. This slightly longer. This one's going to have an extra set of items. Uh, we need to bring this a longer. And the reason for that is that this is going to make magnetic coils, and because they have a slightly different recipe, they produce at, I think it's 0.5, something 1.5 seconds to make one instead of 1 to 1. You need three more of these to do 6 per second and to consume 6 per second. Okay, I had to step over here for a second to try and update our power grid a bit. It was definitely failing with the amount of strain we're putting on it. I'll go deal with what's over there in a second. Uh, and I realized that we are actually not able to keep up with our own energy demands, let alone the bases ones. So we need to research something very specific. It is over... One of these bad boys. Hold on, hold on. I can find it. This thing. Here we go. High efficiency plasma control. 50 blue science to do, and it unlocks these guys here. Because you may be asking yourself, large unemployed, you got all this electricity floating around, why can't you just put that in the damn mech? And that's what those towers allow you to do, these these big blue boys here. The wireless power tower. We do need to consider one thing, which is we have upgrade, we have research sorters, and that came with upgraded sorter mark twos. Oh, sorry, improved logistics is what we researched, which came with upgraded sorter mark twos. But I think what we need to do is actually upgrade some of these ones here. We already get five, unfortunately. Uh, I can't make I can't make the rest because I can't make these machines yet. In fact, that's something we can queue up. Electromagnetic drives. It's sort of an intermediary product, similar to the magnetic coils. And by doing that, we can then add a few more of these bad boys. As you can see, I made a few power plants just behind here. Because now the throughput, like, all the way through is a bit faster, right? These, uh, these orange inserters can only support two. I've also decided rather than trying to split up this output, I think we'll just... There's, there's another iron ore resource right here, so let's go ahead and just grab up what we need for the belt. So six right that one, and six on that one. And then we'll just run this directly to the base. Uh, could you put that down? Thank you. It doesn't, always, it doesn't always place them when I click. I don't know what that's about. Because it, it doesn't look like it's like interacting with something badly. Also, we have like a thousand belts. This, uh, this little tiny belt rig we made down there has been doing the work, let me tell you. Okay, that can just go straight in there. Uh, and this is definitely going to brown out our power, so... Excuse me. I'm gonna have to just. I'm gonna hand make a few of these. It's it's a really weird research it's a resource. It's like it uses two intermediary products, both of which are used in almost nothing else. It's a it's kind of like an evolutionary dead end in a way. There we go. I'm gonna put down two of these, and you'll see my power is going to shoot up. But this is uh, actually we're not hurting the grid that much. All right, nice, nice. Yeah, keep me charged, baby. I'm gonna get a full battery, and then we're gonna fly over there. Okay, we're now going to bring our products from the stone over this way as well. We're going to want to collect them all up in that area. And this is going to bring up a really cool feature of the game, which is that belts are actually stackable. We could raise these up one level, and then they can run over the other ones. How cool is that? By the way, it will try and link them up. You just hold shift to like sort of keep them airborne, as it were. All right, so let me now describe the basic premise of how I do my belt uh, sort of manufacturing setup. Uh, the most important thing to notice is we don't actually want to go over this meridian line, so I'm going to move us down very slightly, and I'm going to research foundation just so that we can deal with anything that gets in the way. We'll need steel first. Steel allows us to do environment modification. The 520 blue signs total to get through the two of them. Environmental modification, which is under this tab, also allows you to bury oil resources. It doesn't destroy them, it just hides them so you can build over them if you need to. But I want to stay fairly far away from that. I want to stay so each machine is three tall, right? Let's we can space this out a bit. So that machine's three tall. Then I would want two belts running here. This is sort of my standard format. Then I would have a machine. Then I would have another two belts. Then I'd have a storage case. Then another two belts. Right, and so on and so forth, repeating ad infinitum. And another machine, and this is where this this uh, oil seat is going to be a bit annoying. Yeah, it's going to get in the way. All right, so hmm, I do need to bury that before we can do anything. I think. All right, but that actually does give us an opportunity to also set up steel smelting real quick. Let me uh, let me put that together. Where are we going to stick? We can stick it over there and bring the steel down. Yeah, we could actually make use of a splitter here. We could grab half of this line, 
put down a splitter right there. Run that in there. This does, of course, mean that this line is going to run at reduced speed, but I think that, I think I'm willing to okay that, to be honest. Then, in order to make steel, it's a pretty weird recipe. It's like one iron ingot uh, into one steel every three seconds. A bit of a strange one. It does work. And, of course, we are now are over that line, so this is not going to work as well as it would normally. Like, the, the, the lines are not going to line up. Just because we are over the... We're over the borderline, over here. If you're, if you're watching this on mobile, it might be a little hard to see. Just trust me, it works like that. Alright, so you can make me some iron plates. Let's give you, let's give you a, a power pole of your own on either side. And then as soon as steel research is finished, we'll be able to build the steel portion of it. Which will be three more machines. Oh, are you kidding me? That one's too close? Okay, I'm gonna have to move up one. It's gonna have to go there and there. Just because uh, there's, there's a bit of a bit of ocean there that does not letting me build. All right, steel smelting has been completed. Nice. So now we can select the steel recipe. You'll see it right here. We're not going to build this in bulk, so I don't really worry about ratios so much. But three iron plates every three seconds produces one steel, which it just so happens is the exact amount of time. There we go. Remember, this is a one iron plate every one second is produced by this thing, which means that as it outputs, uh, what is my trip speed, by the way? Uh, we are fine. Length is two grid, so it's going to go a little slowly. We might need we might need two of these per machine, just because of where it's built. If it was on this thing, it would be closer. Nah, it seems to be coping with one. I think so, anyway. Are you coping? Oh yeah, it's keeping up more than enough. Okay, we can do it with one. I'll do it with the central one. So, uh, what I was trying to get at, sorry, this produces three iron plates in three seconds. This consumes three iron plates every three seconds. So, as long as you have, it's a one-to-one -one exchange, which is really nice. And now we are outputting steel. It's going to output a little bit faster than normal. There's a backlog, but that is fine. It doesn't have to be fast. It just has to work for this part of the game. All right, next up, we need to turn these magnetic coils into something more useful, namely... Uh, Sorry, we need to turn the magnets into magnetic coils, which is a much more useful product. We'll need three machines to do this, because remember, it's... Oh, I need iron. Of course, I always need iron. God, so as soon as we've got this thing built, we won't have to go back for resources anymore. Alright, give me uh We're going to need, like, 30 of these, to be honest. I will go back and get some gears, though. Hold on. Okay, here we go. We, I am putting on the final touches of this little build. Uh, let's also, we're going to need... As, as I said, we are always going to need a few of these towers to stand next to. Finish these things sometimes. Because we are broke for power. Thank you. Thank you. So, basically what I did is I researched steel. We produced steel over here. I'm not sure if that was on camera or not. <laughs> the pausing and unpausing is getting a little confusing. But I put together this little build. So, basically we take in coils and copper from this side. And we turn them into magnetic coils. They get put out on this line. We take in uh, copper plates and iron on this side. Turn them into circuits. They get put out on this middle line. And we've got these little buffer chests. They take off the main line and output onto a secondary line. The secondary line will always get secondary priority, as in so only when these things stop producing will we start feeding out of the buffer chest. That's why it's a buffer chest, right? It's there to deal with those sort of like gaps in production for whatever reason. Maybe the iron runs out, maybe something else runs out, we don't know. All right, but now we need to start laying out our bus and I will explain the basic features of it now that we can actually do it. So, I uh, just want to make sure that is circuits and coils. Yes, it is. Okay, so I think I'm going to treat this as the upper line, just simply because of the, uh, you know, the fact that we've got this stuff here, and like, uh, and also because we're changing sides. It's not really where you want to be. Then we're going to want three spaces between, and we're going to run two lines like this. Right? This is all going to make sense in a second. I think I don't know if this is the best way to do this, but it's the best way I've found to do this. To like produce everything. Get all your resources into one place, especially before you get robots and stuff, which uh, make it a lot easier. Okay, sorry for the darkness, but I streamlined the design a little bit. I, I, w I don't know why we were starting over here, considering how little real estate we've got. But I, was, I just sort of reconfigured things, got a bit out of my own ass, to be honest, and moved everything back a few squares. So it's looking a lot better now. Alright, but this is time just to finally demonstrate, finally, 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 surely, finally, demonstrate how this works. Oh, I've trapped myself in a building. Okay, cool. Maybe we're not demonstrating just yet. Okay, so we build a machine, right? That machine needs to output uh, resources. But I, I noticed, okay, already I'm running out of storage. So let's make storage as our very first point of order. I want you to make storage as Mark 1. Storage as Mark 1 require iron ingots and they require stone bricks. Iron ingots are right over here. 
Let's grab one of those. Stone bricks, though, are all the way over there. So how do we get it down? Well, we run a belt over here and over here. We can grab from there, put it on here, put it on here, put it in there. Voila. And again, machines can fit right next to each other on the equator. So we can actually back them up side to side, just like this. So, for example, if we find something in here that also needs stone, uh, let's say this guy, right? Uh, but he's also going to need circuits. So that's not going to work. Okay, that is not a good example, <laughs> but this uh, but this is exactly how it works. But you can share between the two genes, which is pretty cool, I think. All right, let's put that over there. Lovely, and uh, we're going to need towers on both sides to power it. But there you go. So now we are producing this. Oh, and I do like to standardize this output in the middle, inputs on the sides. Uh, and let's go ahead and queue up. I want to say I want, like... Maybe this these stack to 50, so maybe a hundred storage containers at any given time. And already it's producing more, I can just pick it up. Alright, next we're probably going to need uh, more of these guys in order to keep making more things of all kinds. So let's put down one of these. Very nice. Uh, I don't know why it kept the re inventory, that's a bit odd. It shouldn't have kept the recipe. Bit of a bug. Uh, and this thing needs plates, gears, and circuits. Well, we have all of those things. Circuits right over here. We've got gears right over there. Let's put it on the side. And then we just grab the output. Voila. And now we are making machines. These will be a little slow at first. In fact, can we... Uh, I can actually make you of these upgraded inserters. Those will be useful to have for this. There we go. Upgraded. Bang. All right. So now I'm pretty much just going to go down the line and place items of each kind. It's also a good idea to try and find things that share recipes. So, for example, smelters and mining machines. No, something else. Something else here. Uh, smelters and thermal power plants both use stone. And stone's something we have to bring down. So why don't we do it just like this? Put it there. Put it there. We bring the stone... Ah, that's glass. Hold on. Hold. We bring the stone in like this. We output it there, and then it's important the machine you connect to first will get priority. So I want to make mining machines before I make thermal generators. Once the mining machines back up, the thermal generators will start being produced. And honestly, I want like three stacks of mining machines and one stack of thermal generators. They're not that useful. Okay, cool. Or rather, they're not used as much. Very, very cool, team. So I'm going to knock out a couple dozen more of these. In fact, let me stack this to 10. Do that in bulk. Uh, we actually don't need that on the output. I think I upgraded the wrong inserter. Let me let me rectify my mistake. So that will go down, down, down. We only need output at a very specific rate, but I want to input these gears quite quickly because I want these machines producing at a faster rate. And I'm also going to upgrade using the U key. Upgrade that guy over there. All right, nice. I'm going to continue down the list and pretty much make everything on here. I'm going to make one of each, and I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, I filled in a little bit more of the line, and I've also made sure that uh, I, I merged some uh, iron ingot line up there, so this is actually full. It was really struggling. But now we come to the first part of this entire endeavor, which I think is where it really shines, which is in how you can modularly sort of combine recipes. So, oh, wrong button, sorry. So, if we want to make wireless power towers, we need to insert these Tesla towers into them, plus three of those weird plasma exciter thingies, right? So, the easiest way to do that is simply just to slap down one of these right here, right? We can drag a line from this storage into this thing. We tell this thing, you're going to be making these. We tell this thing, hey, by the way, you can also have a power pole if you, like, kind of feel like it. I mean, it's up to you, though, really. All right, cool. So, it's, now we need to make these things, plasma exciters. Those require four magnetic coils and two of those prisms. Now, we could make them, put them on a belt. There's a few oil things that require them. So, maybe we'll do that really quickly. Like, we just siphon off some glass from over here. Oh, actually, hold on, we don't need to do that like that. We can do it a fancy way, using a splitter. We hit tab, we rotate it. We now have an up-down splitter, so this will come in and go out. And I'm actually going to tell it, I'm going to click on the thing, and I'm going to click on this red boy here. That's going to tell it to prioritize the bottom output. I want it feeding the main line before it makes these things. And then we're going to get it to come up and split out over this way. Okay, cool. Just like that. So we can drop this down. And we're going to make a little a little prism factory over here, I think. Let's do like three, three things of prisms. You're going to make me prism. Perfect. 
What's the recipe there? So every two seconds we consume three glass. Perfect, so three machines is exactly how many we can run on this. Uh, you need to run to there, please. And the output's going to run to there. We're going to do, I think we'll do a fast insert. We'll just pretend like we can actually keep up with it. I can now make these fairly comfortably. Awesome. And then we're gonna to wanna to do a quick output as well. Awesome. And then this episode's gonna be way too long as it is, I can already tell. Paste you out over there. Okay, start eating. Excellent, it's working. Okay, we are making prisms, baby. So now, in order to turn those prisms into something we can actually use, we need to refine them one step further. There we go. So prisms are gonna come in here. Uh, no, we don't want you to be prisms though, please. We want you to be this stuff, whatever this is. Okay, we're gonna insert from there. We're going to have to do a long insert from the magnetic coils. I think we'll use two because they're traveling so far. Uh, is going to have to require. It is going to require us to do a bit of movement. Okay, that one won't reach. That's just how, this is how it is. It's okay. We'll have a bit less efficiency than we would have dreamed of. But that's honestly, you know what? It's fine. And you can make uh, plasma exciters as well, whatever the hell they're called. And you're going to take in prisms. All right, cool. And now we're making these things. Awesome. So I think I'll just. Not really ideal to run sort of pieces on this side of the belt. Like, you don't really want a third line. Uh, but I also don't need them on the main bus so much. Although, you know what? I suppose they can they can actually move right through here. We can move them all the way up to where they're needed. And then we'll put them on the bus from over here. Perfect. All right, awesome. And then you're going to go over there. And we're going to put a slow feed into this one so it doesn't steal everything. There we go, and now we've got them on the bus. It's a bit of a jank way to move him. Honestly, we could have just run a line. It's just bringing it back down is a bit of a challenge. And yeah, this works for now. It's good enough. It's good enough. These fast, these fast inserters are fast enough, I think. All right, but we are actually producing and, and uh, creating those. All right, cool. Then the last thing I want to show you is how we're going to do belts and the inserters. So let's do belts on this one. Why not? We'll do belts... Make me belts, and you're going to make me inserters. Uh, standard fare as always, we're going to drop this down. For belts, I want like, uh, I think I want to take like 2,000 at a time. For inserters, I think 500 is more than enough. And then we're also going to need a secondary stage for you. Oh, why am I making stuff? Hold on, that's the whole point of this whole endeavor. Grab those, there you go, we got 101 of the damn things now, perfect. Okay, drop one over there. Now we have a hundred of the damn things. Even perfect, Tur. All right, you're gonna go over there. You're gonna go over there. In fact, and since this is now an intermediary product, let's put that on two. You'll be on five. Gorgeous. I am going to upgrade these, considering what we're making here. It just seems right. You're going to be making the advanced inserter. We're going to need these electric motors to do it. We're gonna have to do something similar to the plasma exciters to get that done. So let's go ahead and get this set up. Also, we are going to need uh, two of these green boys to actually keep up with the output here. Oh, we can't afford them because of the way I've lined this up. That is what it is. Oh, well. Can't be helped. You will take these and you will take these. Let's go ahead and plug this all in. Lovely. All right, so now we need to create these things. Electric motors. That's uh, one gear, one copper, one magnetic coil, and one iron plate. Well, would you, would you know? Would you know? We have everything we need for it right here. Um, this is one of those ones where I'm actually not going to make a ton of them because we're going to make a ton of them later. So we're just going to we're going to make these as is needed per machine. So that one will take that. This will come forward. There we go. And then I want you outputting to a belt over here, which we're going to run just like everything else, like that. Perfection. There we go. And now we are creating. Uh, Sorter's Mark II. And that, guys, is going to be the end of the episode for today. Thank you so much for watching. This This recording is over an hour. I have no idea how I'm going to cut this down to, like, under 30 minutes. Uh, if I manage to, uh, please applaud me in the comments. If I don't, boo me. Boo me for being an unbeliever. But this is our mecca. This is our factory. And oh, baby. This is our world. Wow. Look at that. You know what?
I'll take it one step further. Uh, can I can I click the button? Can I click the button? Uh, I need to see it. There it is. This is our universe. Oh. As always, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. And of course, a huge thank you to our channel members and patrons for this month. You guys rock. Kelly Ananas, Call Me Bo82, Old Man Tater, Sir Tristan H, Knee Cruncher, Riley David, The Senate, Richard Berry, Sleep Deprived Sam, Arrivo, Charlie Weber, Mermix, Officer C4, Not K Author, Rob, Adichi Fanboy, Adachi Fanboy, LCG Canyon Sahar, Dread Not Us, Jack Smallman, Cut Beef, Go Ham, Jan the Pan, Preth and Perush, Ragnar, Skull Crew, I'm Alpha, you damn right I'm not. Badass Beast, DePoyo44, Killy Thousand, Raija, Mr. King, Cairo, and Couch Potato. Thank you all very much. <laughs>